Hello YouTube Stackers! This is ST with Silver Stacking 101, where we believe in staying stacked and packed, stacked with silver, gold, food, ammo, and packed with the means necessary to defend our stack. A few weeks ago, we started the Economics of Silver video series. We started out explaining that the economy is like a pot of soup that is always cooking and the flavor is always changing. The reason the flavor is always changing is we change shelves periodically. Now we can select the shelf, but once the shelf is at the pot of soup, the shelf can add to or remove ingredients pretty much as he or she wants for the time they're managing the soup. So the flavor of the soup is always changing. In the second video of this series, we identified the five elements, ingredients if you will, that the current shelf is introducing to the pot of economic soup. They were, or are, an increase reliance on domestic energy, deregulation, tax reform, trade, and number five we identified was a willingness to go to a weak dollar. And we went through how it was a threat and it was missed by the media, but it was a threat to China. Two weeks later, the president threw a monkey wrench into my video lineup because he announced a policy that, if implemented as announced, would have touched off a global trade war with the United States against pretty much every industrialized nation on the planet. It would have been economically disastrous. This past Thursday, the details of the plan were announced. And actually, it's not bad. Now, the entire financial world went off the deep end, and I did too, because what was first being discussed was unworkable. The deal with China? Absolutely. We have a trade imbalance. They have profiteered, not profited, but profiteered off us. They have cheated. They do not play by the same rules we pl play by. I want to go over a, a micro example to show how the trade imbalance affects on a, us on a macro scale. So please bear with me while I go over this, uh, this example. We have been told for decades that America is moving to a service-based economy. Like that's a good thing. Manufacturing jobs were going to be gone and we were going to have to become more service-oriented. Let me tell you what a service-based economy eventually does to your money, our money. I work in a service industry. Being an accountant, I do not produce a tangible product. One could say the printed format of what I do is a product. No, it's the service to do it. I do not produce a good for the marketplace. That's not what I do. I am a service contractor. Now, let's say for this example, because it really happened, I have a fishing lure manufacturing company as a client, and I do. So I go take him his work. He writes me a check. I decide I want to use part of the profits to purchase a new fishing rod and reel. 
I go to another client of mine who owns a high-end tackle shop and I purchase a rod and reel. Thing about it is hard to get reels, even high-end reels, that are not made in China. This is made in China and this ain't cheap. Believe me, this ain't cheap. So, what happened to the money that was generated from a service? A portion of it ends up in China. How's it supposed to get back here? We have a trade imbalance. We're not, they're not getting our stuff, we're getting their stuff. It can only come back one of two ways and neither one of them's good. Number one, they loan our own money or what was our money back to us so they could get more of our money. I read something one time about the borrower and the, and the lender and slavery or something. It seemed like I read that somewhere. The second way that money can come back is they come over and invest here and gain influence by ownership. Since they're communist, neither one of those is a good option. So that's how it affects it on a macro scale. I am in favor of a trade war with China. It's long overdue. This situation should never happen to begin with. This is apathy and willful neglect of our elected officials for decades that's allowed the situation that's got to be dealt with now to happen. Are we going to see inflation from it? Absolutely. Is it changing the cost of goods, the raw materials? Yes. There's only two ways that can be dealt with. Erode the profits or pass it on to the consumer. The losers going into this, unfortunately, are going to be seniors on fixed incomes. People on fixed incomes, I feel sorry for, for about what's about to come down the pike. Tomorrow, I am going to do a video that's going to cover some of this, but refining my silver outlook, now we have clarification on the policy. So if some of it seems redundant, I apologize. I try not to be redundant, but the situation we're dealing with right now is a little redundant. But this video originally was going to be, we need to do something about China. Before all this got touched off from the time I announced the five elements to now was going to be, yeah, we need a trade war with China. We got to fix this imbalance. So I am no longer panicking. It's going to hurt. Any conflict has casualties and has cost. But we're going to go through how this is going to affect the value of silver. Wednesday's video, we're going to look at the risk of silver investing. And there are some risks. And I have gotten some real nutso comments so some of these guys, I allow all comments, agree or disagree, but I want to do a video in the near future to just have fun with some of the nutso ones that's, uh, I think I got a pumper or two that's spamming the channel again, but that's okay. We can deal with that too. And I don't want to block people if they make, if they want to make a point. The only people I block are people that are spamming links to promote whatever business deal they got. I, I do block those, but comment your opinion. Agree, disagree, subscribe if you haven't. God bless you. Give me a thumbs up. Stay stacked and packed. Good day.